I bring you here one game. Um, it's not a combinatorial game. It's, um, it's a dice game, but it has some interesting uh, aspects about it, uh, mainly because of the context where it, it, it appears. So it's a pedagog uh, uh, to teach. It's meant to be a teaching device to teach arithmetic from the end of the 18th century. And what happened in Portugal by then is that this man, Frei, I don't see very well, Frei, I say here, Frei Mariano, Frei Veloso comes from Brazil and uh, is hired by the king to, to make a publishing house in the, uh, at the end of 18th century. And he actually uh, makes a publishing house. He had already written a fantastic um, big uh, work on the plants of the Rio de Janeiro area in Brazil. So Brazil was a colony of Portugal, right? Uh, that's how the, the, the context is this one. And they wanted to make a, a, a publishing house also to help uh, the integration and to help explore the, well, the, the nature and the works and the agriculture and mining and the farming in, in Brazil. And uh, this is this great book, the Flora Fluminenses, about the, the Rio de Janeiro plants that he actually didn't publish in this program that I'm describing. But it wa he was really an intellectual. And uh, he published, they published lots of things like this to, with support of the, of the king to help the farmers, for instance, this is an illustration of this book, with practical advice to the farmers of Brazil how to farm, how to build tools, and so on. It was a very important way of teaching the natives uh, of Brazil. These were pocketbooks, which was an innovation uh, by then. And uh, this was the politician from the north of Portugal that actually supported this uh, enterprise of building this publishing house, Dom Rodrigo Sousa Coutinho. And uh, this Arco do Cego, <coughs> this was called Arco do Cego, was created in 1799. And it was a fantastic uh, center in Portugal. They published things of several kinds, uh, like uh, methods for, this is to, methods to, to deal with nature and so on. And they published under this very strange name, I'm going to read to you in Portuguese to, 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 to notice how tough and interesting this is. Tipografia Calcográfica Tipoplástica e Literária do Arco do Cego, which means that it was literary, they made the impressions, they made the uh, things with, uh, with metal, engraving, pictures, lots of things. They built everything from scratch. They hired very good artists from Italy, France, and so on. And they put on this project. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Well, uh, for political reasons, the thing didn't last. It lasted 28 months. But in 28 months, they published 83 publications which is absolutely amazing. And uh, this way that Frei Veloso had this idea that he had for this uh, enterprise was to teach with pleasure, to attract for learning. So it was kind of innovative pedagogically. And they managed to publish 83 things. Uh, some of them are absolutely fantastic. This is an engraving by actually the guy that engraved our game that I will show you. As you see, this is uh, scientific instruments that are being here uh, marked. So they are showing the, this research, they are promoting research and use of scientific instruments. And then we have, uh, in this context, it appears a mathematical game. It's the only game that we know that they published 
which is very interesting that a game deserves to be published among these fancy uh, publications. Now, the game follows the pattern of the goose game, Je de Loire in, in, in French, which is a very interesting thing by itself. Uh, you probably are all familiar with this game. It's a game of dice. There's no intervention of the player. The player just throws the dice and moves the, 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 the pieces. But this game has a fantastic history. It's a very, very interesting history. Actually, besides the history, we are now studying it uh, computationally, and I, I will say something a little bit about it. So this game, uh, uh, Jeux de Loi, was actually invented uh, at the orders of Francesco de' Medici to offer to the King of Spain that by accident, or not accident, he was also the, the King of Portugal by then. So it's a game, uh, we, we actually know everything about it because we are lucky there are historical sources that tell us all, all about it, so it's a game uh, from 16th century. And uh, for some strange reason that we don't understand very well, this game went viral and still is, is still today produced and sold with exactly the same rules after all this time. Nobody understands why, because the game, as a game, is silly. You just throw dice and move, so it looks like like the rules are not important, they could be changed at random. Well, they were not. And that's very strange and is mysterious, and the mystery is even thicker. So this is a, an, a, a, an, Italian, uh, an Italian version, still from the 16th century, Gioco de Loca. Uh, this is actually also uh, from Italy, so the, the pattern is always the same. It's a piece of paper. It can be poor or rich, color or black and white. It usually has all the rules written, so it's self-sufficient. You just need to have dice at home, and you, and you just play the game. The play is it's in a spiral, usually in the counterclockwise direction. It has usually 63 squares. It, it has uh, several themes. The, well, I have a book, you probably know it, L'Histoire de France in, in, in Jeux de Loire, a big book with uh, lots of games with historical themes. It's a beautiful thing. This is actually satiric, chimia, monkeys, monkeys all over. This is Italian, but it's translation of a Spanish one about the life in court. This is a beautiful uh, book, French, about Cupidon. So it's a love, the, the theme is love, and uh, there are lots of considerations about love and the relations and the, the, the playful relation between man and wife, and, but it's still a spiral and 63 houses and, uh, and so on. So this game really caught up. But this is the poor version, black and white, that people would take home and play and uh, there are several ones surviving. This one, there's only one that I saw. It's in London. Uh, well, the thing is, the structure of this game is, uh, it's very easy. It has 63 squares. The capture, when you fall on a, 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 another piece, you switch places. And you have geese on the multiples of nine. And on the geese, you have this rule. If you get, say, five to get to a goose, you repeat five. That's all. You just repeat whatever you got to get there. Uh, so these are, in, in, in game theory, called the geese. And because of this game, they are the geese. On the multiples of nine, and sometimes on five plus multiples of nine, usually, we also have geese. Uh, uh, an initial nine would uh, ruin the game, so ruin the game in the sense that if you respect the goose rule, the geese rule, you would just win. So there's a special rule. You get uh, an initial nine, you go to 26 if you got a six and a three, and you go to 53 if you got a five and a four. To win, you need the exact amount, otherwise you rebound and you get back the excess. And there are a few accidents, only a few, the six is the bridge, you go to 12. Uh, in 19 is the inn, you pass twice, you don't play. 
31 and 52, the, the, the well and the prison, you just wait for someone to fall there and switch places with you, otherwise you don't play, you wait forever. And 58, you have what's called death, you go back to the beginning. You are not kicked out of the game, you are back to the beginning. And I emphasize that because this death is not really death, it's kind of rebirth. I teach at the University of Lisbon a course in uh, history of board games. Usually, I mean, I use board games like historical games like Senet, Ur, Peteia, whatever, lots of games. And in the last few years, I introduced this game. I use this French version that is very, very simple. It only has the classic accidents. I thought that my students that are 20 year olds would get bored with this game. It's not true. They have lots of fun. And this is the part of the mystery of this game. Why is this game fun is something that I would like you to help me understand. Because a game where you don't do anything, you just throw dice, well, it, it, it looked like it would be very boring, but it is not. Well, the thing is, uh, as I told you, the 26 and 53 are the houses where you go immediately if you get a nine at first throw. And usually they are like this on the board, so it's clear for everybody. The rules are very clear for everybody. Now, we could think that the accidents are put here randomly on the board. Well, they are not. For instance, 58, where is it? It's over there. 58 is death. You, you go to the, to the beginning. Suppose we didn't have that rule, and on 58, you could land there and play and get a nine. What would happen? 58 and nine goes to 63, and then you have to go back, and you fall on a goose. You got nine to go to land on a goose, so we play other nine, and other nine, and other nine, and other nine, and you are jumping on geese until you are kicked out of the board. So the rules were thought up. This was no accident. The, the guy that invented the game, he, he, he invented the game based on ludic rules and some other rules. So this 58 out make, makes ludic sense. This is just to show you that even today, this is a, a Dutch game from the 20th century, it doesn't look like a spiral, but it's exactly our game, exactly. It has 58, a goose, a death goes here, it has 63, you get to the pot, whatever. The structure is the same, the, the, the inner part of the game is the same. The thing is that uh, the accidents and these numbers, the 63, that is 7 times 9 and so on, they were chosen according to the cutting edge philosophical knowledge of 16th century. And uh, this is the main, uh, the main expert in the world, Adrian Seville, uh, lives in London. And as he says, uh, it was governed by considerations that would be now called occult, but which the Francesco de Medici's time would have been regarded as the forefront of philosophical knowledge. And that is very strange because the game is good in some way. And so the numbers were no accident. And for some reason, after these centuries, the, the, the manufacturers didn't change the numbers. They keep the numbers, which is strange and mysterious. Well, this, I'm studying with a friend in the University of Lisbon. I'm adapting the, 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 the quality control that we have for abstract board games like drama, tempo, and things like that. We are adapting the concepts for the game of goose, and we are making uh, simulations, computational simulations, playing 10,000 games at a time and seeing what happens. And uh, we are getting some nice, uh, some nice conclusions I will let you know later on in one year time or so. Okay, so we found the, the metal thing to print our game. Our game is very nice, this is our game of uh, the arithmetic pastime. So you see in the corners uh, the four division tables, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, I don't know in, in which order. You have a spiral. Of course, the inspiration is the game of goose. There's no other way, even though they rounded uh, like so many times for 100. 
and there are lots of accidents here, and uh, this is half of the board, this comes, this opens, these two pieces, and second part, you have the penalties, the accidents, and you have the rules, like in the game of Goose, and you have these strange tables that you are supposed to learn that are the numbers, the time, the money, but money is English money, it's not Portuguese money, which is strange. And the um, wet measures, dry measures, you know that this stuff, and uh, things like that, that are also strange because I, I looked it up and they don't match any particular period of time. It's a little bit messy. And uh, the thing is, we have this board, it's the Portuguese board, and we found also this one, which is a German board, that seems to be the original of this game, but nobody knows the rules, but it has books on some accidents. So it looks like it's a game, a pedagogical game, based on some book that nobody knows which book it is. And uh, actually the informations are not consistent. We have, uh, we have, uh, this is a transcription from the, from the uh, British Museum file on, 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 the, on, the, on the game. We have experts like this John Spare. Do you know John Spare, David? So he's, he talks about this game. It's, he says that uh, it was produced by John Wallace, but apparently uh, there's also a, a, one game of this in Victoria and Albert. This is the copy Adrian gave me. It's very low, but you see it's exactly the same thing. And the Portuguese version is a copy from this one, and that we can establish easily. And you can see it's exactly even this position of rules and uh, the accidents and so on is the same. Uh, this, these uh, little poems are, they look like they are written in English originally, even though the owner of this one crossed out something, didn't like something, uh, wrote here in the margin, corrected. But the transliterations of these things in Portuguese, which I cannot, I don't have time to show you, they, some are ridiculous and very, very uh, stretched out. I mean, they don't make much sense, but they try to, 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 to make it look like the English one. Apparently, the first edition in England is 1791, and then John Wallace, which was a, a, a famous uh, producer of games, copied it, but as I said, it looks like it, uh, it is uh, of German origin. How do you do this? You play with two teetotems, and uh, you get two numbers, you add the numbers, and you move your piece. If you are practicing multiplication, you multiply and take just the integer part of the product to, to know how many uh, steps to, to walk. To subtraction, you subtract, and division, you add quotient to remainder, which is strange, two things of different nature. So, and the, f analyzing the, 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 the fine rules, for instance, to, to finish the game, you need the exact number, otherwise you move backwards exactly like in the game of Goose, and there are other similarities with the game of Goose. There are some sources in German that, that uh, talk about uh, a game that comes from the, where does it say, the, from England, but actually it looks like the game is originally um, German. These are the, r the rules in Portuguese that I just summarized to you. They are exact copy, transliteration of the rules in English with some problematic translations. I mean, it looks like it was made in a hurry or something. Uh, these tables, the, the numbers, it's ridiculous that we have in Portugal pennies, shillings, and so on. I mean, we didn't have that money, that currency it was not ours. But we, ha but we had to learn it. It was, it was mandatory. So, 
and these measures, they don't match anything that I saw and I consulted all the books I could uh, put my eyes on uh, to find one moment in Portugal or in England where the measures were these. No, they jump, they are mixed, and actually it's even worse, I'll show you. For instance, in the Portuguese version, in two different lines, we, we get these three inches is one palm, nine inches in one palm, which is in English, this corresponds to the different periods of time. And in Portugal, they just put everything together. So this doesn't make much, much sense, but okay. Uh, this is the, the multiplication table or the addition table. And this is the guy, very famous guy by then, that made the engraving. It was an artist, the artist of that, uh, of that beautiful thing with the little angels with scientific instruments. So this was really considered highly, this game. And that's one thing that I try to look for and collect instances where games were well treated and uh, used to pedagogical and noble purposes. And uh, so here we have another, another table. This one is multiplication. This is uh, addition. And this is division, which is very strange to make a table of division. So you, you cannot avoid s fractions and stuff. But OK, you were supposed to learn something here. Here I have the original English bad quality and the Portuguese versions of the accidents, but I just have here the, what happens here. They explain why, they, they make a little bit of a story like, you, you didn't behave well, you are very dirty like a pig, so we don't play, something like that. So here you pass three times. Here you have a goose like in the game of goose, which he shows clearly that the inspiration is the game of goose. You know, there are some rules that are strange because apparently they depend on the presence of an umpire there. Like, if you have been good today, play again. Otherwise, you have a penalty. So who is going to decide if someone was good in that day? It looks like it, it, this game was played in class, maybe. This is not the only rule that depends on a subjective uh, appreciation. So you have pass, a jump, prison, prison like the, the game of goose. Again, a strange rule, early birds, if you came early to school, you go to 38, otherwise you go to, to 13. Another prison, pass twice, another goose, another pass. This is a strange rule that the game of goose doesn't have. You just move to the house of the, the closest opponent. Actually, in the game of goose, there cannot be more than one piece in each square, never. So this is a strange rule. Here you pass, you pass, you pay, you play again. And this is again, you need a professor, a teacher present. If you lie today, pass three times. I mean, if you lie, you don't say you lied, usually. Right? <laughs> um, this is also a nice rule. From now until the end of the game, play twice on your turn. It's a good price. I, I had never seen a price like this. And this is imitation of the game of, of Goose again. Then another pass. And these poems, they have to be analyzed, and uh, I'm doing that. And finally, I, I, I make a, a survey of the rules. In green are the ones that I think need the presence of a third person, not only uh, an extra person, not only the players. But it, lots of, um, of uh, accidents make you not only pass, but read the table aloud, things like that. So really, probably this was really for, for the classroom, like here. In all these houses, repeat numeration table, or pass ones, whatever. So, this was really to, to teach these tables. And here I analyze one by one the, the houses with accidents, the, original, the English original and the Portuguese version. So it's, it's not very interesting, but I'm looking for similarities and differences, and uh, I have to do it, so merci bien. <laughs>